Okay, as you can see, this is the Happy Model ELRS Mobula 6. And this is the one, right? It's the green one. The box, for some reason, they have the red one. I don't know why, uh, but it's this one. So I've got a lot to say about this little drone. It's obviously my favorite drone that I currently own. Best tiny whoop or small style drone I've ever used. And I'm kind of zoomed in a bit here, which makes it look bigger than it actually is. I wonder if I can get something to show you the size. This is a mouse, quite a small mouse. Uh, yeah, and then this is like a little beta FPV charger thing. I know what I'll do, I'll get some batteries out and you can see the difference. Right, so here we have, just to compare the size quickly, this is a 450 milliamp hour beta FPV battery. This is a 1S battery. This is the one it actually uses. And as you can see here, compared to the battery, yeah, it's a very small drone, as you can definitely see. Firstly, I guess I'll just start with the, the stuff I don't like, and then maybe we'll get into the, and then later we'll get onto the stuff I do like. So firstly, what I don't like is it's uh, because it's so tiny, and this is really just a problem with tiny whoops, right? Because it's so tiny, uh, the flight time and the battery it's able to carry is gonna be limited to about three to four minutes. That's the downside. The other downside on this is that although it's ELRS, the video, video transmitter, uh, for some reason it's like, it doesn't have great range, especially if you're going through concrete, but this does have much better range than any other tiny drone I've ever flown. When I got this, I know the box here shows that it's tri-blade props, right? Uh, but this one actually came with bi-blade props, so two blades instead of three. And although it has turtle mode, so basically turtle mode, if you didn't know, is where if the drone lands on its, you know, upside down, you can actually reverse the motors and it flips itself back over without you needing to go and find it and manually turn it back over. Because you're going to crash this a lot and it's going to fall upside down quite a lot. So the problem with the by blades is that it doesn't have enough thrust to actually turn itself over. So although you get longer flight time uh, with the by blades, it can't use turtle mode with bi-blade props. So I had to actually upgrade and uh, replace the bi-blades with tri-blade props. And it's very simple, very cheap. Um, it was very easy as well because you literally, it's just a pin, you just literally pull the propeller out and put it back in again. But just so you're aware, with bi-blade props, turtle mode does not work. Also this frame, as far as I'm aware, is not glow in the dark, although it looks like it could be. Right, so what do we have here? So we have basically, it's ELRS, so it's a long range, uh, kind of a new system which is still being developed, but it's um, a lot better than the previous one. Longer range, more st stable connections. It's designed for indoor flight. Um, what I'll probably do is put up some like some footage of it flying around indoors so you can see that. It's got an F4 processor, OSD, obviously connects to beta flight, all of that stuff. Micro camera. The quality is not bad. I think it's like 720p or something. Um, now. There's a, there's a few things I'll get onto with this uh, very soon. So it has a 4-in-1 ESC, excellent power, it's really, really good. And in terms of setup, so just I'll just very quickly go through this. I set this up on this transmitter, which is a Beta FPV Light Radio 3 ELRS version with a throttle on the left, left side. Yeah, it was not exactly easy, but it also was not difficult. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. I basically, I had to just connect it to Beta Flight Make sure you have the latest version of Beta Flight, um, and then make sure that the ELRS version is the same. So it should be if you're getting this, you know, in 2023, and then this also in 2023. The ELRS version should be the same. I believe it is version two. Uh, if it's not the same, apparently I'm told that it would be a nightmare to connect them. So luckily I didn't have that problem. But yeah, you basically just connect this to Beta Flight, the drone, I mean, uh, and then you put this controller into bind mode so you have the bind button here and then in beta flight itself you click bind to transmitter and then the drone will enter bind mode the two will connect up and then what happened with me is all of the joystick uh, controls were completely wrong so it was like this was the throttle and this was your whatever uh, so I had to remap the controls manually which is not too difficult to be honest but yeah just so you know that's how I connected it, it has the PH2 power connection. I'm not a huge fan of that. I actually prefer the, the BH, is it the BH one? Whatever this one's called. <laughs> the uh, little semicircular thing. Anyway, uh, but it's not bad. And what I found is that because the, this cable that it comes with is so short, 
you actually have to use one, uh, 1S batteries with a, with a cable, or you can resolder this um, power connection and get a longer one, but then you'd need to have shrink wrap and all that stuff. So the easiest way is just to get the 1S batteries that already have the cable. And then, as you can see here, they easily just connect up like that. Yep. Um, I won't go through all the lights and stuff because that's really more of a technical setup compared to a review. So, and in this video, I'm just gonna kind of review it. So, yep, um, I think, let me just double check here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward. The, the motors, I, I got the 19,000 uh, kV motors because I fly this only indoors. Uh, however, what I did learn is that this does do work quite well outdoors with with tri-blade props. So, yeah, I had to basically tune it on beta flight. Um, with tri-blade props, it does fly quite well outdoors, although bear in mind it's very lightweight. So if there's any wind, it's gonna blow it all over the place. Uh, what I ended up doing is setting up different rate profiles so that when it's indoors, the angle, if I show you like that, um, the angle at which it can tilt forward on horizon mode, or on angle mode, is limited at, I think I put it at like 25 degrees, so that it can only tilt forward 25 degrees therefore limiting the speed so you don't crash it into walls and go crazy in the indoors. And then the throttle output, I put a maximum throttle output of about 70 to 80%, which is still just enough to do turtle mode, especially with tri-blades. But it's not, you know, it's not 100, so it's not going to smash into the ceiling if you accidentally hit the throttle too hard. However, when you go outdoors, I had to make a different rate profile, which I would recommend you to do, which is basically 100% throttle, very generous angle limits so if that's the flying angle when it's level i think the outdoor is like was that 45 degrees just so that if there is a gust of wind you have the power to suddenly correct instead of if you have an angle limit of only 20 you, you can't really correct and you're just going to blow all over the place so that's why i did that um what else the camera angle limit the, so the camera here when it comes i think it's set at like 45 degrees which means you would need to be flying that fast. I hope this makes sense. Like if, if this is level, that's level. Try it like that. You would need to be flying that fast to actually see straight forward where you're going. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, indoors, you're never going to be flying that fast because that would be insane unless you have a huge house. So I had to actually take this um, case off, unscrew this. It's pretty easy, right? They even give you a screwdriver. You, you unscrew this and I adjusted the camera angle to about, well, it's pretty much flat, isn't it? It's like maybe 10 degrees or something. Uh, because most of the time you're gonna be flying this pretty level and just trying to like weave in and out of gaps and furniture and stuff. But it's just about enough angle that if you do go forward, you can still see where you're going. Otherwise, you're never gonna see where you're going. So yeah, my ultimate review of this is that it's the best indoor whoop drone I've tried. I have tried pretty much all of Beta FPV's range my second favorite, the Cetus X. And you might be thinking, well, that's not an indoor drone, but it can be because like I, I did the same thing with this one. So I opened up Betaflight. This is the Cetus X uh, Pro, I think, whichever one means the camera angle can be adjusted. Um, and what I did is I, op I opened up Betaflight and I actually reduced the throttle output to about 60% and did the same, the same thing with the angle limiting. So I limited the angle to like that so that there's no way it can go faster than I decide. And then obviously when you're outdoors, you want air mode and all that crazy stuff. But yeah, so favorite drone, the Mobula 6. Second favorite, Cetus X. Uh, I fly both of them outdoors, but mainly if I'm going outdoors, I would fly this one. So if you're just looking for an indoor drone, I'd recommend you get this one, which is this Mobula 6 ELRS. And yeah, it's really cool. It looks really good, I, I think motors well designed i've crashed it so many times like it literally just doesn't seem to break i've crashed it full speed very very sturdy construction which is surprising because it looks like it wouldn't be that sturdy but it is so yeah if you want to get this the link is in the description and i highly recommend that you get it if you do get it i would suggest that you definitely tune it up in beta flight and make a profile for indoors and outdoors and also uh, get the tri-blade props because otherwise turtle mode doesn't work